Hello YouTube, Mr. Report Newsletter and Tudor Group subscribers. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Whoops, let's try this one. And today is Christmas Eve, December 24th, 2019. And this is Mr. Report number three. I'm sorry, that was last week. Number four. But before we go any further, if you want to become a newsletter, a Mr. Report newsletter subscriber, then you're going to come right here. This is just two bucks a month. So this is newsletter number four. You're going to get access to all the newsletters, obviously, from the beginning. And you'll get all of them from next year. Premium plans right here. And that is $50 per year. And that gives you chat room. I'm your personal tutor. And you get chat room. You meet us on Tuesday evening, 7 to 9. And come up to the mic. Raise your hand. Come to the mic. Ask your questions. We're going to have live interaction back and forth. Really good stuff. That starts on January the 7th. Tuesday, January 7th, 2020. At 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Then uh, my apologies. We're having a health crisis over here. And my Crystal Power interview that was that I was just supposed to have had to cancel it. Had to cancel uh, Eric's too. Well, I, my apologies about that. There was nothing that we could do to avoid that. Just just, just had to uh, had to cancel. So we're, we've got those uh, rescheduled, and we and I'll, I'll uh, Eric and I have rescheduled. And Crystal and I will reschedule just as soon as uh, right after the first of the year. So sit back. This is going to be kind of a lengthy report. This is what the newsletters look like. They look very similar to the Black Star report. It's just the missed report. Instead, it's to be changed in 2020 here shortly. If you notice, then there's another radio show there. Looks like these are it's like 37 or 38 of them from 2012 from my Awakened Radio series donna devane if you guys remember some of you might remember and so he's sending me about one per week so you're getting a new one of these this is, was my very first show with donna devane my first report he's edited out the project black star information that preceded each report and off we go very very good stuff right there so in our first episode newsletter number one then we examine the Differences between the two Gospels of the New Testament. And, let's see, let me pull this back over here. And that is on this topic right here. You're invited to go to Grace Centered. And you may not want to, after what I'm about to show you, but I'm doing my best. Working with the moderator. Working with the administrator. Trying to uh, not get banned and uh to get everything back on the up and up see this see what it says right here moderated i'm being moderated what that means is none of your posts get posted and if they never approve them then you're essentially banned that's what it boils down to so never uh you practice brands of denominationalism you're not gonna have trouble you're not gonna have problem mix everything together preach just one gospel just one church Forget about the Kingdom Bride Church. The Gospel of the Kingdom and the Word of the Cross, they're two different things. Just imagine Jesus Christ going around preaching when he first starts his ministry, saying, Repent, the Kingdom of Heaven is at hand. John the Baptist preaching the baptism of repentance in water for the, for the forgiveness of sins. Then after Christ is sacrificed, when Israel rejects the Kingdom, they reject it from John the Baptist, Christ, and the Twelve. Then God raises Paul up and gives them our gospel, the gospel of the grace of God. He even mentions the two of them in the same verse. Acts 20, verse uh, 24 through 27. His mission, his ministry, to preach the gospel of the grace of God. And those who he went about preaching the kingdom will see his face no more. And yet, I'm being called a heretic, I'm going to show you that in a minute, for showing people the difference and not mixing all together. 
So these are things that you, take in, you have to take into account when you go to these boards and you preach the truth based upon the three witnesses of God's living word. So we have a gospel of water, gospel of the kingdom, and we have a gospel of blood, Christ shed blood. Christ came in water and in blood, not with water only, but water and with blood. There are three that testify. The Spirit is the truth. And there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three into the one are, whenever you read the Greek exactly, from the critical text. So, Gospel number one, Gospel of the Kingdom. Gospel number two, the Word of the Cross. Church number one, the Kingdom Bride. Peter, John, and James. The Mystery Body of Christ, Paul, Barnabas, and Titus. The famous meeting in Jerusalem, it's Acts 15, Galatians 2, is between Paul was sent up by a revelation to submit to them the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles. But he did so in fear of failure. Who do you think he's submitting the, the gospel to? To Peter, John, and James. 50 AD, a decade and a half after Christ's ascension. Peter, John, and James didn't know about our gospel, our mystery church. Peter characterized it as the wisdom given him. 2 Peter chapter 3. Start at verse 14. So this is where we started. Then we went to the two churches. Right here. I'm being moderated. Okay. And uh, then last week we went to the four baptisms. I'm going to show you some of that some of the responses to that in my counter arguments and now number four so wh where are these topics coming from how come you're starting out this way here's the reason why I go here to the website and go down to the scripture section and look right here two gospels of the New Testament two ch the two churches the four baptisms guess what today's topic is this week differences between God and my father art in heaven Difference between God and my Father are in heaven. <laughs> it looks like I got out of order. I might have to change these in order. It's been a rough week. So this is actually number five. You know what I'm going to do? And I'm putting the sun before God. This is actually, and I didn't realize it until just this moment. After working on this all week long, showing you at the website that this one these, these two would be reversed I, this is the one that i should be on working on this week this is the one that we're going to do next week so in my mind after doing these topics then it made most sense to me to go right here so i think i'll when i update the site the next time i think i'm going to reverse these but with the sun see the difference between jesus christ and christ jesus then the difference between god and my father art in heaven some people are wondering a lot of people are going to be wondering, well, I thought my Father who art in heaven is God. All right? And the Son and the Holy Spirit. Isn't that God? Isn't he God? He's a spirit witness of Christ Jesus. He's a spirit witness of the Word, my Father who art in heaven. Where, imagine where he gets his name from. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. My Father who art in heaven is a spirit witness of the Word. Right here, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. This began in the when I first started showing you guys this stuff. God, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. These were spheres. Then they were broken. See, there were three witnesses: the Spirit, blood, and water. Spirit, blood, water. Put them on top of each other like this. But then you give these three witnesses this singularity. They're three witnesses, and you get the heavens, heaven, and earth. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God to come, God who is, God who was. And this is where a lot of people make the mistake. Right here. They actually take the Son of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is the Son of God. Whenever Christ says that I and the Father are one, he's talking about that circle right there. And part of the doctrine that teaches the singleness of the Father and the Holy Spirit is that the Son and the Holy and the Holy Spirit are one. Look at the circle. Look at the circle. 
We learn about relationships. You can learn about the relationship of your soul and your spirit by how the Son speaks of the Father. Right? It's part of the mystery that we learn from the Pauline epistles that helped me to see the light on what's going on here and then to draw these diagrams. And it's really fantastic stuff once you see it. But those blinded by denominationalism, they're not going to be able to see it. And not only that, these veils are going to be broken inside of them. So this is a model, the man of God, this is a model of you. Your spirit, your soul, your body. This is where the sun takes up residence. The new inner man in you looks just like this. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit inside of you. The difference would be where incarnate inside of him, that this is the tabernacle in whom God dwells in us. Okay, so that's the difference in this model that shows God, heaven, and earth. My Father who art in heaven gets his, gets his name right here, from this right here, Genesis 1-1. So that's what we're doing. We're following this line, even though I stumbled a little bit here. And after we do the difference between God and my Father in heaven, we're going to have a week to study how the mystery diagrams work. Which I'm showing you a little bit of that right now. So in this week's right here, the very top of the report, says so as we transition further on, this is going to be number 004. See the, see the 001, the 002, 003 for the first, second, and the third weeks? Those are all Tuesday videos. And any other videos that are special reports, my apologies, the season, this medical thing, I'm not able to do as many of the videos on this channel yet, but I'm going to. Those will not be numbered. We're doing that for a reason. So that when you go to the YouTube channel and you just sign up, you're brand new, six months from now, there's going to be one of these newsletter numbers and a video that goes with it for each week. So a person that just gets exposed to my work, they can go back to 001 and look at the two Gospels, watch that video presentation and catch up. Go to number two, number three on their own time, number four, number five, number six, until they catch up to where we are. That's going to put everybody pretty much on the same page. Okay, so the difference is, who's ever thought about this before? Who would ever think that there's a difference? between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus. So this thread is dedicated to the debate over the differences between Jesus of Nazareth who walked on the earth and Christ Jesus mentioned only in the Pauline epistles. Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the incarnation of the Lamb of God on this earth. He is also the Lord God, I could have darkened that, the Lord God of Genesis 2 that created Adam and the garden. Seventh day guy. God worked the first six days. The Lord God begins his seventh day work, the consecration work, on the seventh day, Genesis 2. It's not that Genesis 2 is restating what was already said. One's the Lord God, Christ, the Lamb of God. And one is the Almighty, Genesis one is the Almighty. God created the heaven and the earth, perfect creation, all singularities in Genesis 1 1. The Big Bang didn't create anything. Science believes that the Big Bang is where everything started. Not true. The Big Bang represents the destruction of a previously existing perfect earth. They became both. Form, that became formless and void during the destruction. Now the waters above, Genesis 1, start at verse 6. The waters above the firmament, the waters below the firmament. The waters above are the heavens, the waters below are the earth. And the firmament in between, the expanse, that's heaven. The three witnesses that I just showed you in the diagram for the earth. Christ Jesus is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. From Matthew 28, where the Father is the Spirit, the Son is the soul, and the Holy Spirit is the body. That's exactly what I'm showing you right here in this diagram. The heaven and the Word, I'm about to show you that, is the same thing. 
In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Same as heaven. The Word and heaven are the same exact thing. The difference is all three witnesses are contained in a single line. Genesis 1 and Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. These three witnesses are broken into their own three witnesses in the first three verses of the Gospel of John that I was just quoting to you. All things, the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, see the circle, and the Word was God, because God and His Word are the same. God and His Word are in the infinite realm, they're there right now. God's Word has no need of redemption, has no need of being fixed. God asked His Word to go over there and to incarnate as heaven, as the Word. Incarnate, singularity, boom. So that you can make Adam, this is spirit, soul, and body of Adam, inside yourself. I'm going to be showing you more about that here. I get down into the article. I'm into this post. Okay. So the things that I'm reading to you are the, coming from this diagram that I just showed you right here. So the word is heaven. Through him all things were made. Without him was not anything made that was made. All things are, is that's the heavens, heaven, and earth that was created in him. So God created Adam as an infinite God in the infinite realm the first time. Satanic rebellion happens. Adam gets killed. God says to the word, go over there and remake Adam inside yourself again. Adam is made perfect, Genesis 1.1. The earth is Adam. Made perfect inside the word. It's held together. Inside the word. But then God strikes God strikes the earth and makes it void because he's reproducing what happened in the infinite realm. Adam's death. Now Adam is being reconstituted. So God of Genesis 1.1 is reconstituting the broken remains of the earth of Genesis 1.1. All the way through the chapter reconstituting the domain the, the remains that's the reason in, in my science work that i'm saying that relativity and quantum physics do not reconcile in this universe they do not reconcile but they do in heaven they're supposed to reconcile but they're not reconciling to us now because the universe is broken that's the reason why when you realize about the original singularity and that it's broken, then you're going to realize that the earth, the earth part, go back to this, this diagram. Do I have it right down here? Right here. You see the earth that's right here. This is like the woman. Heavens is like Adam. Earth is like Eve. The seed that is begotten in the middle is right here. So there's no way that you can define the earth of Genesis 1.1 by the earth of Genesis 1, 8. 6 through 8. The first is a singularity. The earth of Genesis 1, 1 is a singularity. The heavens, the heaven, and the earth are all inside of it. When you make them void, the heavens, the waters above, and the waters below, then they overlap. The firmament is the expanse in the middle. It's, the heaven is begotten in Genesis 1, 8. Heaven is begotten. But you see there's a heaven here. And there's a heaven here. David and Solomon know. First Kings 8.26 They know about the heaven and the highest heaven. There's a difference. Seventh day people are connected to this heaven right here. Seventh day people. People that are born part of and have a part in Adam's recent incarnation from Genesis 3.21 That's where the skins come in. People think that God's out there, you know, killing animals and putting skins on them. No. Adam and Eve were heavenly. They were put in skins, human skins. There's no procreation in heaven. You can't do It's impossible. That only happens in the earth. So with the fall, they're thrown down on the earth. That's when they're put in skins. Adam's recent incarnation began in Genesis 3.21. Genesis 2.7, when Adam was made with Eve inside of him, that was in heaven. And a long time passes from Genesis 2.7 to Genesis 3.21. Those six-day people 
The six-day people are the ones that are made in Genesis 1. Read 26 through 28. That God is speaking. God who is is speaking. And he says, let us make man in our image. Our image is because there's three witnesses speaking. So the thing to realize, whenever the, the earth was broken, it was made void, and then it became the heavens, heaven, and earth, God can no longer send his word into that because the words continued to exist as a singularity. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit were all the same thing in heaven. It was a singularity. So God not only reproduced the death of Adam by making the heavens, heaven, and earth, God had to sacrifice his word. He had to break them into two parts. The waters above, the waters below. The power from on high, the Father, overshadowing the Holy Spirit. That sounds a lot like Luke one thirty-five, doesn't it? Because then the Son, the Holy Child, conceived of the Holy Spirit, you see. But it's also conceived of the Father, the overlapping of the Father and the Son. So what you have is God sacrificing his word. So whenever Christ died on the cross, that was a reenactment of the sacrifice that God had to make of his word before he could send him into this creation right here. Because when he sends the light in Genesis, so God says, let there be light. What do you think he's sending? He's sending his word into this creation. And there was light. And it was good. So whenever, so look at, Paul is the one that refers to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as a man. See how it's a man? The man Christ Jesus, 1 Timothy 2.5. There's one God, right? One mediator between God and men. The man, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Christ Jesus. This is Christ Jesus right here. Most people don't realize the difference between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus. The heavenly man, Christ Jesus. What this area right here shows is what happened whenever God raised, this is Ephesians chapter 4, 10 and 11. God raised Christ above all the heavens. See the heavens here? Raise him. How do you raise somebody above all the heavens? Because you're going right up into the highest heaven. That's right here. This is the holy place of the temple of the tabernacle of God. Water part, veil. Soul part, another veil. The Holy of Holies part. This has the same exact layout as the tabernacle of Moses in the temple. When you lay it down this way, this is the Old Testament. This is the Pauline epistles. 39 books, 30, 13 books, 13 books. This veil is represented by the book of Acts. There's so much that you can see in these diagrams once you recognize the witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. They testify throughout the Bible. Genesis 1.1 1, 1 holds the primer. For breaking the code. Once you understand, you, you identify what that primer is, then you see the three witnesses everywhere. You see them from in, in, in uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Shem, Japheth, and Ham, the sons of Noah. Peter, John, and James. Elijah, Christ, and Moses. You see them throughout. There's always a spirit witness, a water witness, and a blood witness. Elijah is a spirit witness. Christ, the Lord God, who made Adam and Eve, He's the, the Lord God, the Lamb of God. He's the blood witness into whom they're going back inside. Because the, the sun part, the heaven part, God who is part, sums up the other two. Okay. Let's go back up here. So the word in heaven is going to be the same thing. The word of, Gen of John 1, 1 through 3 and heaven of Genesis 1 1. All those words in these three verses say the same thing as what's in Genesis 1 1. Once you realize there are three witnesses of the Spirit, blood, and water, you realize that it's God, Word, and all things here, and it's God, heaven, and earth here, but it's the same thing. The Lamb of God is the incarnation of Christ Jesus in heaven. The Lamb of God in heaven. He's in the center of the throne, standing before God. The sea of glass is in front of them. Peter, John, and James are on that sea of glass. That's what the gospel, the kingdom, is all about. Making intercessors, kingdom of priests. They stand on that sea of glass. But those of us who obey our gospel, 
gospel, the grace of God, we are baptized directly into the Lamb. And we are seated in those heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The same place that Jesus Christ went is where we are in Christ Jesus. Getting ready to read that right here. This is one of the best verses in the entire Bible for recognizing the difference. Because with him, Jesus is here. Christ Jesus is in the same verse. Okay. Well, let's get down there. So the Lamb of God is the incarnation of Christ Jesus. So the Christ Jesus is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lamb of God that was sent into our world. The light that came in in the center of the throne. Takes away the sin of the world. The Lamb of God. That's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit as a singularity in heaven. Okay. So the Lamb of God is the incarnation of Christ Jesus in heaven. This can get a little bit complicated when you realize that there are so many incarnations of God's Word that have different names. And they're all incarnations. God's Word is still in the infinite realm. Perfect. No need of redemption. No need of salvation. He's already there. Okay. The Christ Jesus in heaven of this creation, while Christ Jesus is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the three these three be one. That's using the Wycliffe uh, translation, which is the accurate one. Even though Wycliffe stumbles, he's using the received text, and only four manuscripts include his verse 7. 1 John 5, 7. Too bad that he stumbled right there. Okay, Th these three are the one, heavenly man. That's what I was just quoting to you from 1 Timothy 2, 5. The word made flesh is Christ Jesus. Who has been in the highest heaven. 1 Kings 8, 26, 27. Of Genesis 1, 1. This is the diagram that I'm sharing with you. When you get your hands on one of these newsletters. And you have the link there. Then you can go. You can pull up my diagram. Right click on it. What you can do. In it, right click on it. And you can download it onto your. Uh, that's how you can gradually in time. Get all my diagrams from the Mystery Explained. 80 of them in that diagram. Jesus Christ is the Word made flesh. John 1, 14. Jesus Christ is the Word made flesh, right? On the earth. Who is the Son of that heavenly man. Which makes him, Christ, the Son of man. In other words, Christ's title of Son of man has everything to do with him being the smaller version of Christ Jesus. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In one person. So when Christ is walking around, he's the Son of God, right? But he, say, he keeps saying, I and the Father are one. And he could say, I and the Holy Spirit are one. Because Jesus Christ is a walking singularity. He has the Father in him. He has the power to judge. He got all that stuff. All the good stuff. Because the Father is going to disappear. In the end, the Son is going to grow, 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 grow. The Father is going to get smaller, smaller, smaller. The Holy Spirit gets smaller, smaller, smaller. Until the Son is the Word again. At the end of the process, the mystery process, the Son becomes the Word again. So, the Word... Uh, the Son, just like every blood witness in the Bible, testifies for the original singularity. That's the thing to realize. Your soul testifies for the original singularity whenever you didn't have a spirit. You didn't have a body. All you, all you were was a living soul in the perfect earth of Genesis 1-1. Heavens and men and women became parts of the broken universe. They do not exist in the, in the perfect universe. There's no concept of a man and a woman and an angel. Take the woman, put her back inside the man. You get something greater than a man or a woman when you do that. But then you take that man and you put him back inside the angel. The, the angel is the man half and the man is actually the, the water witness half, like the woman. Take the, woman, the man, put him back inside the angel, and you have an immortal soul that is man on man. It is powerful. Like a godlike. A ch a, that's what it is to be a child of God. God who is, God who was, God who was to come. All is one singularity. Eventually we become singularities again. There are no men, no women, no angel. There, all of our parts are put restored, put back together like Humpty Dumpty. Okay. So one of the best ways of seeing this, it has nothing to do with with Christ, with uh, Jesus Christ. His His title as the Son of Man He's the son of that heavenly man. The son of this heavenly man right here. That's what makes him the son of man. 
Son of man, right? Man, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Not that we're not going to give Jesus Christ DNA from either Joseph nor Mary. That's why scripture said, the scriptures say that he was conceived of Mary. No, he was conceived of the Holy Spirit. He was conceived by the Father and the Son, or the Father and the Holy Spirit, commingling until, just like heaven, was begotten. And then that son, the holy child, that testifies for the original singularity. So the son turns out being greater than the Father or the Holy Spirit. Both of those have an end. The son has an end too, but as the word. So this is, uh, this is how you can see, this, is, this helps. Some people think that I'm out of my mind, right? They're thinking there's a difference between Jesus Christ walking around on the earth as a singularity and Christ Jesus who is heaven of Genesis 1-1. And the word broken down into their three witnesses. But God being rich in mercy because of the great love which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, he made us alive with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised us up with him. And seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. So you you see what happened? God raises Jesus Christ from the dead. And he raises him above all the heavens and he puts him in Christ Jesus. In the highest heaven. Right at his side. And then, God baptizes us. When we obey the gospel, God baptizes us into Christ's body. We're members of Christ's body. That means when Christ died, we died. That means when God, when, when God raised Christ from the dead, he raised us from the dead. Whenever he seated Christ in the heavenly places, then he seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we're members of Christ's body, and we're sitting right there with Jesus Christ, who was raised from the dead, like we're raised from the dead, in the highest heaven, the highest heaven, the almost infinite universe. We're already there, right now. We're already there. That's why scripture says that we're ambassadors for Christ. We're ambassadors. We were sent from heaven, the highest heaven, into this world now, this earth, to preach the gospel so that others can join us in Christ Jesus in the heavenly places. Now that, when you realize what's going on with the spiritual operation of God, that makes the evangelist extremely powerful person. The evangelist has the Holy Spirit inside of him that hands the believer the faith of Jesus so that he can believe. We don't just wake up one morning and decide to be Christians. It doesn't work that way. God chooses us. And when he chooses us, he sends the preacher. And when he sends the preacher, he sends the Holy Spirit with the preacher. And the, with that Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit has the faith of Jesus that is, becomes your possession. So whenever I'm preaching the gospel to you, then the Holy Spirit is convicting you. And your, the door of your heart is opening up. And with the Holy Spirit puts the faith of Jesus in your heart. And it's that faith that you exercise, that faith of Jesus from Romans 3, verse 26. You have to go to the Greek to see it because it's, they're going to change the uh, faith of Jesus to the faith in Jesus. Like as if you're going to have faith in Jesus. That's not what the Greek says. It's showing that we are getting a possession. The righteousness of God. God's giving us that righteousness. He's imputing that his righteousness upon us. You cannot work for it. You can't earn it. It has to be given to you. That's why there are no works to have anything to do with our gospel. There's no water baptisms, no laying of hands, there's none of that. Which you should already realize if you're following this, these lessons. As soon as you add work to it, then you work for it. Beat yourself on the chest and be proud, but you're not going to earn the righteousness of God. Nobody's able to earn that. God has to give it to you. Free gift. He has to give it to you. So those that are in Christ, those that are called to be in Christ, it's not because they're any better than anybody else. Other than God makes them better. It's because of events that happened in the infinite realm already. Things that we've already done, we're doing again. We were persecuted in the infinite realm. We're being persecuted now. And we're being persecuted by incarnate gods all around us that did it in the infinite realm. That's part of the judgment process. The righteous and the unrighteous. Everybody's being divided. The judgment is happening in the infinite realm. These smaller judgments that are happening in, in this world, in heaven. Remember, this is all... We're doing these things over and over and over again, over and over and over again. 
things already done from our perspective. Because in the infinite realm, no time is passing. The beginning and the end are the same thing. If you can see us inside the infinite realm, we will be frozen motionless for all the ages to come until we walk back through that veil. We walk back through the veil restored. Jesus Christ doesn't have to. He's already there in the infinite realm. And he's already one with God in the infinite, infinite realm. So every believer in our gospel has been crucified with Christ. So that God has raised us up with him to seat us with him in the, Jesus in the flesh. In the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You should be able to see the difference between Jesus Christ being raised up above all the heavens and seated in Christ Jesus. You should be able to see the difference in Jesus Christ who was raised and Christ Jesus into whom he was placed. The simple reading of the scripture tells us that Christ Jesus is indeed very much larger than Jesus Christ. Obviously. Christ Jesus is almost infinite. Who has been seated in him and all believers with him in the heavenly places. Scripture says that he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him, in the word, all things were created, both in the heavens and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him, because he's the word, and for him. He is before all things. And in him all things hold together. Try to imagine that. All things hold together. So take a look at Jesus of Nazareth from the four Gospels and ask yourself if all things in this universe can fit in him. Ain't happening, is it? No. There is no reference to Christ Jesus made outside the Pauline epistles because Christ Jesus, the Christ Jesus Paul knows, is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as three into the one are heavenly man christ jesus in whom the entire universe visible and invisible earth and heavens and heaven is held together those of us truly in christ jesus are contained by god's living word that has existed as the father son and the holy spirit since long before god sent him into the world to save anybody and that's one benefit of this exercise is you realize who Jesus Christ really is. He's the Lamb of God. He, the Lamb of God is in heaven right now. He's still there. Because Jesus Christ is an incarnation of the Lamb of God. And the Lamb of God that's up there in heaven right now, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, He's an incarnation of Christ Jesus, who's the heaven of Genesis 1-1. Gets kind of complicated, doesn't it? Imagine how difficult it was to see these things for the first time. So I'm reading the scriptures. You know, as a kid, 18 years old, and Gradually over time, God's building precept upon precept. He's sending me to the right places to learn from the right people. Those two ladies, her, their, their, uh, that was Judy Bailey, God bless her, and Catherine Smith, Catherine Smith's husband. Now, Catherine Smith's husband didn't have any diagram. He didn't see. They helped me over five years, going every Monday night to see the differences between the gospel of the kingdom and you know these things that I'm showing you. And so that built the foundation. And then I left them. Went to the Berean Bible, the Berean uh, Grace Church over here. Learned from that guy. Read some books. God showed me what was the meat and what was the bone. What to keep and what to throw away. And then as time went on, gradually he showed me these things. And, and, and I agree that they, they appear to be very complicated until you see them. And then once you see it, you, you, you're you going to internalize it. You're going to see them internally. The new heavenly man inside of you is going to open your eyes to being able to see these things. It's the new inner man that's inside of you, the one that really knows the things relating to the mystery. Our natural man can't comprehend those kind of things. So it's a battle between the mind of the natural man and the mind of Christ that's in our heart. Thinking with the heart, not with, not between the ears. That's the way that you learn these things. And I thank God that He sent me ahead to be able to see it and to write the book, to write all, draw, all the, draw the diagrams. These diagrams were being drawn back in 2000 through 2004 until the, my book was finally written in 2005. That's how long ago that this uh, 
where it was put together, published in 2017. So the word, John 1, 2, is standing between the two veils, the true tabernacle, as the heavenly man, Christ Jesus, which shows the Father, Spirit, the Son, blood, soul, the Holy Spirit, water, body, of Christ Jesus. Our teeny little earth is the itsy bitsy little speck of earth. So we're just a speck. This is the, the, the universe that people think is infinite. Our universe is not, the physical universe is not infinite. For certain. It's a teeny little drop of water compared to heaven. This realm here is almost infinite compared to this realm. And then this realm is infinite. Right here. This is an incarnation, and this is an incarnation, and we are incarnations of God's here, incarnate in this little earth, and on a dot that's inside of there. Well, on the deeper side of these lessons, the thing that we're going to learn, or we're more mature, if we have time before the black star gets here, obviously, then we're going to learn that heaven is incarnate inside of us. Christ Jesus, the Word, is incarnate inside of us. And that God is incarnate inside of him. Well, heaven that's incarnate inside of you is a copy. It's an incarnation of heaven. So, as sons of God, we're sons of God. We're running around in heaven. And guess what? We already know each other. We know each other from the infinite realm. We're members of each other's body. That's what Paul writes. That we are individually members of one another. Romans chapter 12, 4 and 5. So whenever we want to contact one another, we don't call each other on the phone. We communicate with each other by peering inwardly into our hearts. It's like a giant Rolodex is the way it's explained in the, in the mystery explained. I mean, I mean, it's a giant typewriter ball. You see these typewriter balls? You have an A on it, a B, a C, a D, all the letters. Well, that's the way heaven is inside of us. It's like a singularity again. Father, Son, Holy Spirit put together as the word, right? As heaven. On the face of it, we can see Christ's face. And on the little, when we look very intently, we can see our brother's faces. Each one of our brothers is represented. And we can talk to any of our brothers. We're all connected. So our journey to seeing heaven is inward. Today, it's inward. Heaven is incarnate inside of me. I'm hoping that heaven is incarnate inside of you too. Inside of heaven in you is the infinite realm, which seems impossible. So inside of us, imagine that that Rolodex ball is in there. It's Christ's face on it, our brethren's face is on it. And we see God in the face of Christ. So what well, the thing that we realize is, is that his almost infinite, this almost infinite realm that's contained inside of us, contains the infinite realm, the incarnation of the infinite realm. Guess whose face is on there? God's face. That's how we're going to see God's face for the first time is looking inwardly at the incarnation of God that's inside of us. He's inside, boo, God's inside of you, I'm telling you. Those of you that have obeyed our gospel, God's in there already. The new inner man inside of you has to mature. Part of that is getting your doctrine right. If you're stumbling around with bad doctrine, you're mixing things together like that Whitecliffe guy. All right? Not only can't he see it, He's going to be like a Pharisee. He doesn't want to go inside, and he's going to block the door so others can't go inside. God hates that. He hates that. And here, he, everybody's being shown using color-coded diagrams what's going on. And they still can't see it. And they're frothing at the mouth. It's almost like that this Whitecliff guy hates me as much as Pelosi hates Trump. And, they, and he just can't stop. Okay. So the word is standing between the two veils of the true tabernacle. I already read you that part. Okay, so Jesus Christ incarnated onto our teeny earth to represent the word made flesh. He did the same thing as Christ Jesus incarnating into heaven to become the Lamb of God. So when John the Baptist is looking at him, John the Baptist is an incarnation of guess who? Adam. And the, the Lord God that he's preparing the way for is Jesus Christ. So these are the same two principles from the garden. The first man, the Lord God who made him. 
So when Jesus Christ talks about John the Baptist, he's talking, the Lord God is talking about the man that he made for the garden. And, the, and whenever John the Baptist is talking about Christ, saying he must increase and I must de decrease, he's from above, I'm of the earth, men of the earth, speak of the earth, do things of the earth. Well, he is the man of the earth. That's who Adam is. He's Elijah. He's, he's um, as the prophet. He's John the Baptist as the priest. Remember, the son of the priest. Zacharias. And he's also the king because he's David. Eve is Bathsheba. He's also the father, Abraham. Name means father. Sarah is an incarnation of our mother Eve. Like Noah, like Moses. Those are the two witnesses that keep coming back over and over again. They're the they're only three begottens. In the entire Bible, there are three begottens. You can consider each blood witness to be begotten, but there are three named begotten. The only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, right? The incarnation of the Lamb of God, the incarnation of Christ Jesus, and the two people that he made in the garden. Adam got no belly button. He didn't come out of no woman. Eve got no belly button either. She came out of the side of Adam. Everybody that comes from them uh, got belly buttons. And the rules all apply to them. You live once. If you're a seventh-day person, you live once, and then the judgment. That's it. Once per age. The sixth-day people can be born again and again and again. That's a different subject. Remember, they're connected to heaven of Genesis 1-8. There is a difference there. I love getting questions on that. It shows me that somebody's listening, and somebody's able to discern and see the difference between the sixth-day people of Genesis 1 and the seventh-day people of Genesis 3 that are derived from the the pair that came from Genesis 2. So Jesus Christ is the son of that heavenly man. The Lamb of God is actually the incarnation in heaven here, and the Jesus Christ incarnated onto the earth here. So you have God, one with his word here, that's one. Then you have heaven that's incarnate, that the word incarnate here, heaven, that's two. Then you got the Lamb of God, that's incarnation of Christ Jesus, that's three. You have Jesus Christ as the incarnation of the Lamb of God, that's four. Jesus Christ is then raised above all the heavens and sit inside of Christ Jesus. He's seated inside the incarnation of himself as the Son of God at the right hand of the Almighty from the infinite realm. And that how that works, how the veil these veils are pushed into the sun here. That's explained in my book, The Mystery Explained. Okay, so the golden shell representing... And I'm saying, look down below. This is actually how this, how the infinite realm extends in every direction. The word incarnate, incarnates as heaven. Inside of heaven is where the, the earth is of Genesis 1-1. So this is in the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth. Then this is made void, made into heaven, seven, and earth. See, heaven, seven, and earth. This creation. Everything is held together in the Word. This is the way it really is. There's no way that the visible earth is infinite. God's infinite realm is infinite. That's where we're gods. But we also have an incarnation in heaven. If you're a seventh-day person. Okay. And then you have an incarnation here. The idea is at the end we're all restored. When we step back through that second veil, we're going to go back into the infinite realm. We're going to be restored. Those that are the wicked that worked with Satan are the ones that are cut off from the infinite realm. That's what's happening here. The whole purpose of being here, yes, you're a God, but you're already in the infinite realm. You're there standing in God's courtroom right now. But you incarnated inside of Adam. You incarnated inside of all your brethren. We all, I'm telling you, we all know each other intimately from the inside out. So all of Adam's brethren that incarnated inside of him in the infinite realm were killed on the day he was killed by Satan in, from the Satanic Rebellion. So here we have Humpty Dumpty thing happening. One member at a time, we're members of Adam's body in the earth right now, and we're members of Christ's body in heaven. We're members of, guess whose body in the infinite realm? God. Right? So the golden shell represents... God's infinite realm is standing in all directions. The word realm, that's heaven. That's Christ Jesus. This creation 
is truly in Christ Jesus. Every molecule is held together in him. God uses his word like a glove because his touch, apart from his son, would destroy this creation in the blink of an eye. That's important to realize why the son is necessary. Why it's necessary that we judge the world and the angels. Remember what I was saying about Christ is in us. He's tabernacling inside of us. That tabernacle is where God dwells. God's going to judge the world and the angels through us. Incarnate inside of us. One at a time. God can do that. He can be incarnate inside of us each at the same time. Just like his son is in, incarnate inside of us. And God must touch us and deal with us through his word. So the word is a glove that is on top, that is covering it, a hand that is almighty powerful. The only reason we're not destroyed is because we're in Christ Jesus and he's dealing with us as his, he would deal with his son, his only beloved son. Okay, nothing that is infinite can touch a finite host. It's impossible without the intercessory work of God's living word. While Jesus Christ incarnated into the little blue ball of our creation, Christ Jesus contained, uh, continued to contain this entire universe at the same time. When God raised Christ from the dead and seated him above all the heavens of this creation, then Jesus Christ was seated in, Jesus Christ was seated in Christ Jesus or the red word realm which is heaven of this entire creation scripture says therefore from now on we recognize no one according to the flesh even though we have known christ according to the flesh jesus of nazareth of course this is i'm adding this here my uh addition to help you to understand so even though we have known jesus christ uh christ according to the flesh yet now we know him this way no longer for if Anyone, this is if you obey our gospel, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature created in Christ Jesus. The old things pass away, behold, new things have come. That's why I have a little bit of disdain for those that are preaching that we're born again. That's what Christ teaches as part of kingdom doctrine, John 3 about being born from above. A kingdom disciple is born from above. We cannot be born again. It's impossible for us to be born again as members of Christ's body. It's impossible because we are created into something totally brand new. New thing. That's exactly what you're seeing here. He's a new creature. New things have come. Do you see the differences between Christ Jesus and Jesus of the flesh? Good luck in the deliberations. So th these putting these type of posts out there on the internet is what's getting me banned. It's what's having these moderators who cannot see past their own nose. It's what's getting them to treat me the way that they're treating me. Let me show you. Because I didn't show you everything over here. Non-traditional theology. Now I've been posting since 2006 in the theology forum. But you see this is a sub-forum. Sub-forum. Let's go back over here for a second, and, and I'll show you. These rules are the ones that the guy that wrote them broke. Okay, so here's my original post. This one was made in 2006. So, Mr. Wycliffe, he comes along and he decides that he's going to lock these up. He, he tells me to... He sends me a message and says, go start them over again. The, the, the people that were debating with you a long time ago, then they're not even here anymore. So start it again. So, here, so that's what I do. I, I started them all over again. What does he do? There's not even a reply yet. You know why there's not a reply? You see that it says that this is the, the last reply. That's what it says. The last post is by this guy right here, the administrator, right? But you can see right here, it says there are no replies. You know why? Because this guy writes nasty stuff to me, locks the thread, and then deletes it. So his administrator doesn't see what he's doing. That's the reason why. Unfortunately for him, <laughs> before he did that, I copied it and pasted it and already replied to him. So I'm going to show you that here in a minute. So, from here... This is where I've been posting in this room. This is where I dug up these posts from 2006 in the archives, back in the back. 
Start it again. Well, now that wasn't good enough for this guy. Right off the bat. Boom, boom. He's got to lock him up. So what does he do with him? He... Let me see here. Non-traditional theology. That's where I've been... That's where I've been debunked. That's where I've been put to, put to. So, here's the differences between Jesus Christ and Jesus and, and the, the post that I just read to you. It was posted yesterday, more than 24 hours ago. And you see it's just sitting there waiting approval. And it looks like it's not going to be approved. Then, uh, for example, the four baptisms. We did that the previous week. Let me give you an example of the charade, of the stupidity of what's going on here. Here's, here's my, you know, I'm showing how the Holy of Holies, I was mentioning this a minute ago. This is the same pattern for all the three witnesses. It's a man, spirit, soul, body, the tabernacle of the temple, of the tabernacle of Moses. We can tell by the positions of the veil about the time of Reformation from Hebrews. How think, what they're going to change into and what they are now. Okay, so this is my original post. I mean, come, come on. Everything, every dot, every T is crossed, every I. It took me some bit of time to fix this from a different post, a different website, where I got banned. Okay, so then Yeshua, 153, he is a fellow that subscribed and already wrote for my book. So, I mean, that's part of the reason that we're here is to show more people about God's Hidden wisdom, it's hidden in plain sight. You can see it once you see the three witnesses. But then here is the answer. So Yeshua writes me. And then see this message. This was written yesterday at, I'm looking at the clock over here, almost 24 hours ago. And it's not getting approved. So Yeshua can't even read my reply to him unless he subscribes to my newsletter and he sees it in there, which that's what he did. He's, he's watching this video right now, along with you guys. But this is the kind of treatment that we're getting. If you go and, and try to teach the truth of what I'm showing you, you should expect to see this. Because those blinded by denominationalism, there are 20,000, there, there are thousands of different kinds of professing Christians. And there's only one truth, and I'm showing it to you. You can call it just my opinion if you want. I can see this stuff. And it doesn't change. Whenever, whenever your theology continues to changing, it just means you're growing and you're seeing better. You're seeing more stuff that God's showing you. Nothing wrong with that. But whenever it stops changing, that's because God's showing you the truth. It doesn't change. It's like a little kid, you're asking questions about what happened to the uh, broken glass over there, and the little kid tells you the same story every single time. Every time you ask him, because that's the truth. When a story keeps changing. Then you're going, wait a minute, you told me this yesterday, now it's that. Which is it? So this moderator right here, it's awaiting approval. This is another way of being banned. So they don't actually, see it says I'm a member, hey, but it shows that I'm being moderated. But it doesn't say that I'm banned. Go to christianforums.com and you'll see the same thing. It shows I'm a senior member. I've been there since 2004. Tons of posts, lots of manna. Lots of blessings and everything. People like my work. But what they do is, is they send you to a room where you have to fill out a ticket and they just never respond to you again. So I'm not banned, but they, I'm, I am unofficially banned. Just like I'm unofficially banned here. So I can type, I can answer people's questions, hit the post, they're going to show up as pink, and the moderator is just not going to approve them. Kind of sad when you think about it. That this guy... Not Yeshua. He's a good guy. But this uh, Wycliffe guy. That's just a nickname. Nothing to do with the Wycliffe uh, translation of the Bible. The 1300 translation. That's just a name that he chose. His name is actually Jared. But it's pretty sad whenever he could not quote from any of my topics. He would never quoted me to offer an argument for something else. Or an argument against me. A rebuttal. Right? He didn't offer a rebuttal using scripture and saying, look, the gospel of the kingdom is the same thing. See, it says it here and it says it there. He didn't try any of that. 
Never quoted, never opened his Bible, never quoted anything. He just uh, was berating me. I'm going to show you that here in a second. And then he he locks up, locks down the threads, and then he moves the threads to a room where nobody reads. So this, uh, let's see, this non-traditional. Here's the thing. See, this is where all my work's being. So I just started posting here. He's throwing me down here in this trash can anyway, right? But here's, look over here. See, th this is the dumping ground. See this Whitecliffs guy? See his name? He's the one that's deciding what is sound doctrine and what's not sound doctrine. And he just writes, he's being mean to me. And then he just puts it down here. Well, look at this, September the 3rd. See, October, December. There's not, there wasn't a reply written in this room for two months. From mine here on December the 15th, the previous one, was him doing the same thing to, to uh, Johan. He did the same thing. He's trying to make a, a, uh, some statements about the real Jesus from his perspective, which he has every God-given right to do. But this guy doesn't like it, so he puts it out of sight and out of mind. Keep on going down, you're going to see the same pattern. September... October, I mean August, you just have to go down a few messages and you're back in a half a year ago in June and July because nobody reads here. Nobody comes here. Nobody's going to reply to anything in the subform, the non-traditional subform. This is like uh, being an underclass. This is like the third class on, a, on the Titanic. The first class people don't go there. They have no reason to be there. And if they come here, there's only me and one guest. Whenever you have this type of, of bad behavior and the breaking of the rules by the moderators, then a member who is a member, it's showing me in this room. See it? Subject started by who is viewing this board? Me and one guest. Well, that guest is likely a member, but he doesn't want to be seen in this room. So he logs out and he comes down here and reads the post. He doesn't want to click on one of these and respond to it when he's logged in as a username because then this guy's going to come and jump on him very unfair. God hates this. Put your hand on the scales to change the outcome without even using God's word. This guy is a guy that's going to be visiting the lake of fire for the ages to come. And we're going to go through all these things because this guy, we have a relationship in God's infinite realm as a God. That's where he helped the devil. But he's going to accuse me of that. Let me get back over here to the newsletter for a second. Um, so this is the end of that post. And you cannot go to this forum and weigh in on it because the moderators make it let it just sit there. So if you're going to weigh in on it, then you're going to have to uh, write me at terrell03.com. Terrell at terrell03.com. And extremely, extremely busy having medical issues and things like that in here. Ow, pardon me. Okay, so... TheGraceCenter.com moderator antics continue. So this is a, I don't, I'm not, I'm looking at the time. I don't want to keep here that long. So it's waiting moderation and it's never going to get approved. Basically, that's what it boils down to. And uh, I'm just writing here that I'll be happy to to get beyond this Bible board stuff. My plan was to take parts of the mystery explained and post it on that board. You know, just a section of it and give my commentary. Because I can help people. And then they they become informed about my work. And then they can go and, and get my book. They can get the ebook version at the website. Right? I mean, that's a good, that's a solid strategy. But not if I get banned from everywhere. So see how God's trying to help me. God's trying to help me. Sending me this different direction. I'm working as hard as I can doing the Project Black Star, and I'm doing this right here, two days a week, right here, this stuff. And the devil is just right there. His his people are just right there, ready to, go, ready to stomp your head in if they could. Project supporters include John and David, Kathy, and Dr. Laura, Kenna, Dr. Deborah, Scott, Galen, Care, and Peter and Gary have asterisks by their name because they subscribed this week to the uh, Mystery Report Newsletter Tutor Programs. Then Peter and Gary purchased their autographed, numbered, author's copy of my book, The Mystery Explained. Pardon me. You're just uh, 
here just recently. Both of them. Appreciate you guys' support. This is all the support right now for the um, the mystery report and the tutor program at this time. Then uh, Terrell writes, this is what I wrote just this morning. This was getting to me. I'm putting this together for you guys, and, and, and I'm going, I, I'm not just going to sit back. I'm going to fight. So there's an administrator that's above this moderator, the admin. He, uh, this is kind of funny, because I like Clint Eastwood. Um, oh, I don't have it pulled up anymore. But in my, let me see here. Yeah, I'm logged in on this one. My messages. Read my messages. I, I can show you this guy. So far, I like him. I, this is what he, this is, see, he's Clint Eastwood. The admin, the administrator. See, Whitecliff's here. And this is what I was about to show you. This guy is not approving my post. He is locking up my, my threads. And he's berating me in front of the other members without quoting me. He's breaking all the rules. And then he says, it's the shepherd's job to look after the sheep. As if he knows anything about God's word. Never quoted a verse to me. If the wolves object, then so be it. And then he's rolling and laughing. You, you, you just don't know how, how I'm looking forward. You don't know how I'm looking forward to running into this guy in the lake of fire. We're going to be there for a spell. Let's just put it that way. Very, very much looking forward to that. So I wrote the admin. And... Look at my time. Not going to be able to go through it. I mean, read the whole thing to you. So I just showed them what I showed you guys. This, my posts on these two topics have been in this theology forum for more than a decade. And here comes Prince Charming over here, the Wycliffe moderator, and he decides that that just can't be. So instead of enforcing the code of conduct rules, he's breaking them. He, could, he This is what he writes to me. Your theology is convoluted. What a mess. He's not supposed to berate me in my work, calling it convoluted and messy. He's supposed to be quoting me and then offering an opposing view, supported by Scripture. He's going on about, you believe that God has multiple plans? Well, of course he does. He's dealing with Israel one way. He's dealing with Kingdom Bride in one way through the Gospel of the Kingdom. He's dealing with the members of Christ's body. Those are the three primary dispensations. If you look up the word, you know what it means. God has different households. Guess what? He deals with angels differently than he does men. Can you believe it? He deals with cherubs differently. He deals with Satan different than the good cherubs. Right? Come on. There, there are thousands of different dispensations. God's been in the creation business for an infinite amount of time. He's, but then, uh, I, and I read to you guys, I don't need to harp on this too much. But he says, but mostly what I really, really, and he actually had one of these really is darkened. Then, um, so I darkened this for the administrator to read. He says that I'm trying to make Paul a central figure. I talked about that last week. Making Moses a central figure. That doesn't make Moses the central figure because the Lord God sent the law through Moses. He sent the, this, um, through the Pauline epistles. He sent us the information about the dispensation of God's grace, our mystery gospel, our mystery church, through the stewardship of the Apostle Paul. That's what his 13 letters are about. It just makes him the steward. A steward is a slave placed above the other slaves. But we have to recognize his stewardship and the wisdom given him that Peter warns about. So I'm actually quoting him whenever he's, he's calling me a heretic. That's what he's doing. This doesn't, what he says, my work doesn't even qualify as Christianity anymore. So, uh, now I'm thinking, JWs, Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm thinking, all these different kinds of different Christians, people that, that do the snake charming, and they have the right to practice their religion the way they see fit. I disagree with it, but I'm not going to berate them about it and call them heretics. So I'm, and this is the rule, and guess who? Who copied and pasted the rules for the board? The Wycliffe guy. You may not discuss other individuals' beliefs or religious organizations, but you will not harass, insult, belittle, threaten, defame, or flame. That's exactly what he's doing. It says right here, directly um, calling another member a cultist, a heretic, or a big, big, bigot. What's he doing here? 
What's this? Just a nice wife calling me as heretic? He's calling my work heresy. And my work is right. So then, I'm not going to show you. This guy is just berating me. It's terrible. He says, I think your theology is garbage. Do you think this guy's eyes are a little too, too close together? I, I, I. He thinks this board and everything's all about him. And his broken theology. And the way everybody's supposed to believe what he believes. Or other, otherwise, he's going to ban you. So then he gets, this is the part, the shepherd's job is to look after the sheep. No, the moderator, you're not no freaking shepherd. You're a moderator of a, of a Christian board where Christians are sharing their different views. Scripture says, and I'll quote it for you. There must be heresies among you so that those who are approved become evident among you. Paul wrote that to the Corinthians. So this guy, and he's actually got the rolling on the floor thing. He's really proud of himself. He thinks this is great. Little does he know. He's going to run into a cast iron uh, pipe um, from God. And this is showing how long my post has been sitting there. And also, the thing, the point that I'm going to make here at the end, just a little something that I want to show you here about this board. Let's go to where I'm supposed to message board. No, I don't want to be in the personal messages. Let's go to this one. Let's go to the theology forum. See, this is in the non-theology. Because if I put it in the theology, he's just going to block it and change it and move it. Okay, now here's the thing that, that you want to look at. See that there's only one two topics that have been written on today. Two topics that were written on yesterday. Three topics that were written on Sunday. Saturday. One on Saturday. Before that, look at the amount of time in between these. December. You don't have to go down too far. And you're in November. Because there's hardly any activity on this board. Who's here right now? Just this many people. Oh, oh, oh. You see this guy right here? He's the one that's supposed to be approving my message. He's not approving anything, is he? No. You know what he's here doing? He's here moderating tarot. Because if I type anything on any of these posts, they're not going to be posted. They're going to show up in pink. And he's just going to let them sit there. So the people never know I even wrote it. That's why I think that the administrator over this guy needs to take a look at what's going on because what happens I've done this a long time people like him berate belittle move post they have their hand on the scales Christ hated that and he's changing the outcome of these debates that's the reason that people are not writing here so he acts like he has to put me on moderation I'll write four posts in a day, and there'll only be 20 posts written the whole day by all the membership combined. There's no reason for you to have to do that, is there? If you're a moderator, and you only have 20 posts to moderate. Doesn't make any sense, does it? Except for this, is the, he is accusing me of being the of the wolf, and he's the wolf. Locking the way to make sure nobody gets in. Clarifying statements, the four baptisms. This is Yeshua, and this is James. The guy that subscribes, premium program, the tutor program, newsletter, mystery report, and he purchased a uh, copy of my book. Already shipped, it's on the way. And he is in Europe, by the way. So, um, looking at my time, maybe I needed to, uh, as time permits, which is not going to be looking at the schedule anytime soon. Um, maybe I need to the four baptism. This is what he's writing. These are my answers. What I like to do is allow you to write your entire response without chopping it up. So it appears just the way it appears to me. Then I'm going to quote you and, and go line by line. Some people, they don't have an argument. They just break up a person's testimony. And then you're never able to get a, to see the coherent thought of what they were trying to convey. So here are my clarifying statements. It looks like an older version of that diagram. This is showing how the spirit of the word, the faith of Jesus that I was mentioning earlier, and the Holy Spirit of promise, this is what comes from the Holy Spirit. This is what goes into your heart, Christ in you. 
this mystery among the Gentiles, Christ in you. It begins as this, coming through the, with the gospel, our actual possession, the faith of Jesus. Then God takes up residence in him, and then you have this Holy of Holies finished product. This is me right here. That the, the guy, the Wycliffe guy, doesn't have heaven incarnate inside him, doesn't have God incarnate inside him e either. And uh, in the future, then I'll show you the difference between someone that has the Antichrist incarnate inside of him and the devil incarnate inside of him. He thinks he's a Christian, and he's not. And he's serving the devil and calling me the wolf. Shame on him. Those three witnesses, he's pointing a finger at me, and those three witnesses are pointing straight back at him. He's being going to be judged by his own words. So this is where that um, Yeshua is mentioning, he's talking about the baptism. Well, he's going to go to um, back to the ark, but there's no water for our one baptism. Going to go back to Second Peter right here. And that's the wrong way to go. There is nothing to do with water for our baptism. But Yeshua got that part. He says, some minor details, doctrinal precepts that need just a little bit of adjusting. But those are the things that we want to fix before we get to heaven. So we don't want to be judged with our doctrine broken, with, with, with misstatements in the doctrine precepts of what we're teaching others. That's like giving bad bread to children and, getting, and us getting rewarded by having our rewards removed. So whenever a brother comes along and removes that beam from your eye, you're supposed to change. But if Yeshua, if James, if he does that for me, then I'm supposed to change. You see how it works? So I make my argument. Now, unfortunately, the way this is supposed to work is Yeshua gets to click on the reply button, quote me, and make a counter argument. But he can't do that because the Wycliffe guy is not posting my reply. The only place James can read it is right here. It's just terrible. The origins of the Holy Spirit. And I hope that more of you guys, this is Gary, came on, got my book. I hope that you'll send me questions. Because the questions that you ask, this is like gold. Other Christians that just come along and get in my work, they, they see my work, they see the three witnesses, they're going, holy cow, this is, this is good stuff. They're going to be asking the same kind of questions you're going to ask. So this is an opportunity in this featured section for... You'd ask your questions, and I'm going to give you my answer. God who is, God who was. This is definitely the JPEG. Sorry about that. It's not the uh, the TIFF. Probably copied right off the website instead of uh, out of my file, out of my book file. Is this one the same way? Ah, this one's not quite as bad. So anyway, I give, I come and give my counter arguments as an attorney. Or as a, uh, I don't know, a, uh, a doctor of theology. With supporting, with not just supporting with scripture, not just supporting it with scripture, but with the diagrams for my book, The Mystery Explained, where the embodiment of The Mystery Explained helps you to see the bigger picture. This is like Adam laying on his side, spirit, soul, body, the earth, though it was made void. The angels are up here, men are down here. Then here's God who is. This is God handing down New Jerusalem. Body of Elijah. What you see in scriptures, the body of Moses and the body of Christ, but there's no body of, there's no mention of the body of Elijah anywhere. We understand this is the types. This is the angel half of Peter, John, and James on this side. These are testifying for the angels, as Peter, John, and James are testifying for the men part. These are Providing intercession, intercession as priests, actually. But they're doing the speaking for the world. The angels on this side, on the sea, the angel half of Peter, John, and James, and those that were selected to be here, until eventually these members come here, and these members come here, and they are in the Lamb with us, eventually. At, and this is the earth part. This is the heaven part. This is the highest heaven. The rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. In Christ Jesus is up here. 
So you have a similar situation with the Holy Spirit witnesses on one side and the Father's witnesses on one side and the immortal souls in the middle. That's where we are with Christ, with Jesus Christ in the middle. Our Holy Spirit half and our angel, the, the Father half is already put back together again. Finished product. Done. Perfect. Because God made us perfect. Then, down here, you have the men part, the angel part put back together. That's what goes to heaven. Eventually, God becomes all in all. Eventually, there are no more angels in heaven. There are no more people in the world. All the reconciliation is done. They're all immortal souls in here. At that point, David, and I have diagrams that show this, walks up Jacob's ladder. Jacob's ladder from Mount Moriah to the Sea of Glass. So instead of dying in the future, people are not going to die anymore. They're going to serve David on his throne as a priest or prophet. And then at the end, when they're mature, they're going to go up that ladder and serve the Lamb. And at the end of the age, they're going to participate in the marriage supper of the Lamb to become a member of his body. Until all of us go back, guess where? The infinite realm. You can see where you are now. Find your place in this universe. Find yourself in heaven and find yourself back in the infinite realm. Three different incarnations that God is making into one. That's what this summing up process is, about, is all about. So there's God's mystery. There's the mystery of Christ. Right? Us being added into the same body, whether Jew or Gentiles. Mystery of Christ. So there's God. Christ's mysteries go this way. God's mystery goes this way. Uniting the three realms again into one thing. And there's also a mystery of Adam that's not mentioned just like it's the body of Elijah is not mentioned. We know through the types. That's this operation that's happening right down here with a lamb sitting in the middle. The incarnation of this entire realm in the middle. So the transfiguration, that's what I'm saying. Peter, John, and James, they represent something. And they are beholding Christ, the Lord God, Adam, Eve, and, I mean, Adam, Elijah, and Eve, Moses. At the end... Revelation 11, the two witnesses are Elijah and Moses. They have the same exact powers of Elijah and Moses, and those are the powers of the original cultivators of the land. Burn off the land, call the rain on the land. These are the powers, the powers of Moses, and the powers of Elijah are the powers of Adam and Eve in the garden. This is the first where they're in the garden. And, this, and as Adam, the Lord God, Adam, the Lord God, and Eve. The original three begotten. And this is how they are at the end. Christ, Elijah, and Moses. Men are baptized in the body of Moses. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Just start reading. Water witnesses. Water witness signs are everywhere. Baptized into the sea. Into Moses. Into the sea. While all the living came from Eve. Moses. And that's where everybody goes back into. The body of Moses. Except for those of us called by God. To be members of Christ's body ahead of time. Why? Because he has to judge the world and the angels. From inside of us. God requires tabernacles. To dwell inside of. In this three dimensions. Of time and space. Inside of time and space. God's infinite. He can't do it. Unless he incarnates inside of us. So God can do it. God can do anything. This is how he's doing it. The angels and men. Members of Christ's body. Judging the world. And the angels. So it makes sense to you when you're looking at this diagram why Paul can say that we in 1 Corinthians 6, start two, 2, and verse 2 and 3, that we are going to judge the world and we're going to judge the angels. Don't you know that we're going to judge the world and the angels? Because they're the same thing. This is the greater half and this is the lesser half. Sim very similar to what you see right here. Christ in the middle. Angels. Well, the body of Elijah. That's representative of all the angels. That's why Elijah didn't see death. And Moses had to see death because he, this is Eve, represents the, the transgressor back in the garden. Leading to death. And the prophecy, whenever, whenever Moses struck the rock twice, you will not lead this Israel into the promised land. Moses died before crossing. He was allowed to go up on the mountain and look across and see it. Wasn't allowed to go there. That's the same as going, being here in the earth and being able to see over into heaven, but you can't go there. So much types, so many types in the spirit, blood, and the water witnesses from the beginning of the end uh, to the end. 
But th whenever you're writing me, this is the type of reply that I want to give you. You have to actually sit down. Th here's another diagram that didn't come out as clean. My apologies. Because this is very clear from the one that's in my file. Very, very clear. So I may have to go back and uh, before I upload this newsletter to fix a couple of these diagrams. This is a JPEG. This isn't a TIFF. That is way, that's much, much clearer. Second Thessalonians 11. This is Trevor. I love Trevor like a brother. He loves the Wycliffe 1348 translation. And from him, that's what he's going to say right here, is that it was the Wycliffe Bible that helped the, the translation. It works for him. Like the old King James works for a lot of people. I prefer the New American Standard Bible. The critical It uses the critical text, the Lockman Foundation. And you can use like a Nelson's um, new, uh, new King James Version. Those are going to be the two best because they are modern English. The English has changed from 1348 and from 1611. 1607, 1611, period of the old King James. English has changed. The reason that new translations come out is because English as a language is transitioning. It's changing. The ancient Greek does not change. It's written in stone. The ancient Hebrew. The ancient uh, is not going to change. So because your language is changing, you have to get the updated translation. The, then the thing about using the older translations is that you spend half your time translating the English for people that speak English. I prefer the New American Standard because it uses the older Egyptian manuscripts. I realize it has to be filled in by some of the received texts, which are the Antiochian manuscripts. Those are the ones where, from Paul's letters that were written by Paul in Antioch. The thing is that these Egyptian manuscripts, Paul wrote them earlier. They're older. And so there, there are copyist errors in the Egyptian, the Byzantine manuscripts. There are copyist errors in both, and it's about equal. But the critical text, the older Egyptian, is the one, like it doesn't contain the last three verses of Romans, because Paul hadn't written it in there yet. That was a letter that Paul originally wrote, and it was copied, and it was sent to Egypt. After the close of Acts in 61 AD, Paul wrote the final three verses of Romans 16. But his, his uh, gospel, his my gospel, he calls it my gospel being according to the revelation of the mystery. Paul couldn't write that as part of that letter yet because the Acts hadn't closed yet. He had he was still going to the Jew first and then to the Greek. He was preaching the gospel of the kingdom and then the gospel of the grace of God. But after the close of Acts, one of these letters circulated back to Paul that wound up in Antioch. And Paul added those last three verses. Paul himself added it because he at that time was after Acts 28.28. He was going just to the Gentiles, only preaching the gospel of the grace of God. No more gospel of the kingdom. Period. Done. So then it was time for God. That's why the prison epistles contain most information about the mystery that he writes about. Ephesians 3, right? Colossians 1. I mean, you got mystery of Christ. Colossians 4, 3. God's mystery is Christ. Paul doesn't write those things before 61 AD. He doesn't write them to the Romans. And then you look at the the received text, and you say, look, it's right there. It is there. Paul was doing that, because it was written in 59 AD, right? Wrong. The critical text proves that the last three verses where he talks about the mystery was added after 61 AD to a, to a letter that was already circulating. A page from the Bible, um, Roxanne. So uh, this is from a different translation, and... Whenever we get into these deliberations, we get into these discussions, we're going to have more and more talk about the Wycliffe translation or the, the uh, Old King James translation or this one, Vera Fenton Bible translation. And I'm not going to go there. If your first language is English, you're going to be advised to use the Lockman Foundation 1969, unless they've updated it, I haven't checked, um, translation that uses the critical text, number one. That's my number one. But I, you see, for me, in the, in, I've gone deep, deep, deep into this stuff, the, but dissecting, trisecting the Hebrew and the Greek. And so I use the, the uh, New King James Version 
for the first decade of my ministry. And then when I kept having to consult back over the critical text, because there are errors in the received text. There are errors in the critical text too. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's perfect. It's not. It's about an equal thing. But I realized I wasn't getting the whole picture from just the received text. So you know, I made the decision to switch over to the New American Standard critical text. And that's where I've been ever since. So that's what I'm going to recommend if your first language is English. And But there is a lot. I've In my book, I quote the, the Wycliffe Bible for First uh, John chapter 5, verse 8. That is the quote. And I had to put a reference in the bottom. That one verse, Wycliffe got right. But the, 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 for the New Testament, the Bible that's on my desk is written in Greek. I know enough about the Greek. It's a, it's a, it's a, a, um, interlinear Bible. And it gives you the majority text, it gives you the received text, it gives you the critical text. Side by side. And you get the actual Greek that you're reading the, pre, the, uh, preposition. The, uh, pardon me. You get to see the entire word. A lot of people, that you're studying the Bible and you're going and using the Strong's word, uh, you know, the numbers and things, and you really think you're on it and you're not. Because you're only looking at the roots of the words. You have to actually look at the Greek words. You're going to have to have, if, if you're going to dissect and trisect, and if you're going to debate with me on these topics, you're going to dissect and trisect the languages. Is that where you really want to go? Then we'll go there. But you're going to be looking at the actual Greek words. With the prefixes and the suffixes. And we're going to look at the sentence structures because they speak like uh, the way that I would uh, Merlin. They talk like, you know, like the kind of old, the way you think of old English talking where they get their verbs and their their pronouns, their nouns turned around. That's the way that the Bible's written. It's straightened out by the translators. So, I mean, if you love this translation, more power to you. God love you. And um, Roxanne writes that the Deuteronomy was originally written in Hebrew, not Greek. Well, of course. But this fellow over here, especially when you get into some translations, they're going to go to the uh, Latin. <laughs> They've got they got Latin trans. Nobody, in my view, wants to use a Latin translation. It's a Latin translation that you're translating to English. Don't do that. Go back to the Greek. Translate directly from the Greek. Don't go through the Latin Avenue. That's that's trying to tell the story that somebody else told you. Third-hand information rather than getting it directly from the original manuscripts. But there are, like the Wycliffe Bible, I'm very confident that there are parts of this translation that Roxanne's talking about that are going to be fruitful, that are going to help you learn things. Like I was... Uh, um, Dina was sending me videos about Dr. Kim, you know, and, and so you're asking me questions. I'm going to give things from my perspective, and it's going to appear like, like maybe I don't agree with Dr. Kim a lot. I, I agree with him on a lot of things. There are things that we're going to agree on, things that we're going to disagree on. That, you're going to get that pretty much wherever you go. Remember, whenever you're looking at my work, you're looking at the three witnesses. You're looking through the lens you're looking at God's wisdom through his three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. That dominates everything. That Whenever that revelation was made to me and I could see it, then I saw the need to dissect and trisect the Greek and the Hebrew, the Aramaic, much, much less. Totally went in a different direction. And I'm going to be sticking with the, uh, for the duration until the Black Star gets here. And we're taken. I'm going to be speaking, I'm, I'm going to be advising the New American Standard in the New King, King James Version. Both of them are very good. Then uh, did Paul err on occasion by reformer. Then say I went down and I posted. This was before that I got this moderation thing. So this was this. And unless he went back and turned them back yellow. Did Paul err on occasion. Thing is, like this reformer guy. They don't see that Peter, John, and James were part of the kingdom bride and that Paul, Barnabas, and Titus are members of the Christ body. They don't see the difference between the body and the bride. They have the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of the grace of God mixed together. They only have one church. So 
The interesting part of that is, is that they spend their time not only translating the the Old English, but they're going to spend time apologizing for the contradictions between Romans 4 and James 2. Paul's talk, he's writing to members of Christ's body, the dispensation of God's grace. James is writing to kingdom disciples that obeyed the gospel of the kingdom. He's telling them they have to obey the law, that if they stumble in one point, they're guilty of all. Paul's saying that we're under grace, so we're not under law. <laughs> so they have to come up with all these different these fancy ways of reconciling things that are not supposed to be reconciled. From Hebrews to the back of the Bible, like the four Gospels, that's the water witness of the New Testament, the literal, physical prophecy being fulfilled. The Old Testament is the spirit, blood, and water all put together. That's why there's 39 books back there, and there's only 13 for Paul and 13, the number of the steward for the kingdom uh, epistles. There's a reason that Paul says one thing and James and Peter and John say something different. Because they're speaking to members of different dispensations that were saved under different Gospels. The Gospel of the Kingdom and the Gospel of the Grace of God. And if you think those are the same thing, then you're going to spend your time convincing those that are trying to read your work of something that is just not true. That's what denominationalism, in my view, is all about. Mixing the water and the blood together, defiling it, turning into a message that God sent to nobody. And then you're walking around in your own delusion that you created. And this is where, uh, oh yeah, yeah, from the reformer. And so I'm not going to go through the whole thing. This is getting really long on this update. This should have been uh, quoted right here. I'll try to straighten that out before I upload this. This is what I was telling you about the three different parts. This is the uh, tabernacle and the temple diagrams. It looks just like a man, doesn't it? Just like the man Christ Jesus. Because the scriptures represent a blueprint of Christ Jesus. Whenever you're reading through the verses in the, of the scriptures and you're going through the passages, you're walking through the passages of heaven. That's what's happening. Heaven inside of you is the incarnation of Christ Jesus. Heaven above is Christ Jesus. And it's laid out in exactly this fashion. Right here. We have a place in the middle. If you're, your man half and your angel half is already put back together, you're in the goody, goody, good part of New Jerusalem. Peter, John, and James, <laughs> they're in the water witness part. Their angel half is not even reconnected with them yet. Are the twelve apostles in the body of Christ? This is from Dan. And the answer is going to be no. Unless they have dual citizenship like Paul. Paul has dual citizenship as one of the kingdom disciples. Remember, that was the only, the gospel of the kingdom was the only gospel in town when Paul's converted. The reason that, that Paul circumcised Timothy is because he has dual citizenship in both. Paul, Timothy was like Paul's son. And Paul, at that time, was still preaching the kingdom. And so, Timothy wanted to come along. Come along. He wanted to preach the gospel of the kingdom. He can't. He's a Gentile. But, so which means, in even the kingdom bride, Peter, John, and James, they're still under the law. Matthew 5, 30, 17. They're still under the law. James 2, verse 10. If you, if you miss on one thing, you're guilty of breaking the whole law, according to James. Well, Paul couldn't send uncircumcised man out to preach the gospel of the kingdom so he circumcised them himself that must have been painful but those parts of scripture you can understand through the three witnesses of why Paul had to circumcise Timothy when he preached to the Galatians that circumcision is nothing you're not supposed to do it anymore and in fact you get in trouble for doing it like you get in trouble for doing water baptism because our baptism one baptism has nothing to do with water nothing it's a work. Now, if you're adding a work of circumcision, like the work of baptism to the gospel to get somebody saved, you're done. Finished. Baptized in the body of the Antichrist. You're going to be under the deluding influence for the rest of your life. A lot of the people that I'm running into in these boards, their deluding influence has them by the nose, and they cannot see it. They cannot separate the three witnesses because the veils within their themselves is broken. They're, they're all broken. They could not understand the concept of sound doctrine. If you smacked him in the face with it. 
Looks like I got a little something off here too I need to take a look at. Top stories of the week. And this is submitted with my opposing views. Trump should be removed from office. I do not believe that. I didn't vote for Trump. And the way he's being treated, he's going to get reelected. Because people like me that didn't even vote for him, they're going to go out and vote for him. Because what the Democrats are doing is the same thing that this Wycliffe guy is doing to me on this board. They're trying to use underhanded trickery. It's, it's interesting to me that if, if, you wanted, if you just want to see people berate the president 24-7, just turn on CNN. They just get a panel. They'll have 12 people, 8 people, 4 people. They don't care how many people. And they're just going to throw the football back and forth and berate this guy. Berate him. In the old days, if you do that to George Washington, you do that to uh, Jefferson, they call that treason against the presidency, against we the people. Duly elected president. Did 60, what is it, 63 million people vote for Pelosi? No. She got voted for out there, California district somewhere. You know, maybe a million people or something. And she's going to have this guy removed with trickery. With the shift show, the Nadler show? And now the shift show, the Nadler show, wasn't enough. It wasn't enough that it doesn't just come out of the judiciary, which it should. It had to go to the, uh, the intel committee, the shift show, right? All those witnesses. They brought all these other witnesses. Then they write up the articles that are lame. They don't even say that, that, that Trump did anything wrong. Obstruction of Congress. You gotta be kidding me. There's a separation of powers. He has a right to go to court. And so he says, okay, I'm going to court. Pelosi says, we don't have time for that. So by making that an article, they're impeaching him for executing his constitutional right to have the third, the third branch of government look at it because there's such a thing as confidentiality between the president and his aides. Just like Pelosi has confidentiality between herself and her aides her chief of staff, her, the leader of her campaign. You can't just go in there as the President of the United States, the most powerful man in the country. You can't go in there and demand that from Pelosi. It's separation of powers. And if he wants it, he can, he can ask for it. And if she denies, he goes to the judge. Even if it goes all the way to the Supreme Court. And then you get what you want, right? Thing is, Pelosi promised for the left radical base that she's going to have this done before Christmas. So then she slams the gavel down, takes the articles, puts them in her pocket, and hauls butt with them. Because they're not worth the paper they're printed on. They do not even allege wrongdoing, much less a high crime and misdemeanor. And for me, what settles this, this guy has a chance to break the law a thousand times a day. Just like Putin does. Just like the leader of Iran. Just like these, these leaders, they have the opportunity. This is the most powerful man in the world. He has a chance to do all kinds of crazy things. Behind the scenes, nobody would even know about. But if he gets caught, he gets impeached. If this guy was a habitual liar, if he was a habitual lawbreaker, Schiff show would have turned up something. Nadler. What about the Mueller report? Pardon me. Two years. Millions and millions and millions of dollars. Nothing. Came up empty. If this guy's a habitual violator of the law, they're going to be catching him every day breaking the law. And they're still going back to this, this talk that he had on the phone with the president of Ukraine. That's the focus of their, and what he did wrong. He's trying to, yeah, what are you saying? That he was bribed? He was bribing them? Is that what you're saying? Because that's not what anybody of the witnesses said, and it's not in your articles. The, the, Pelosi and the left, CNN and all those are just really, they are trying to get dirt on the president just so they can impeach him. But they've been doing this for three years. And it's not going to work. It's going to backfire. So I'm not surprised to see uh, that uh, New Jersey, that New Jersey was the uh, representative, switch back over to the minority party. Because in November, they're going to be the majority party. I even wrote Charlie Crist, District 15, uh, 16 here in Florida. I'm not a political person. But I know Charlie Crist. I went to school with him. I sit behind and see my last name's Croft, right? Crist. His sister Liz sat in front of me for three years in junior high school here. Charlie Chris was our pres student council president. And so he's talking with Chris regularly. Whenever he left, he graduated. 
our student council president was Liz, who sat in front of me for three years. So I got to see Charlie all the time. I shook his hand and, you know, talked with him. And I, I write him because, you know, I like him. And I told him, you better switch. You better switch because you're going to not be in power again. You know, he's getting kind of old. He's he passed. He's got to be 63, 64. He's not going to be there that much longer. He's going to be out of power this November, and he's not going to be back in power again. I don't see it happening. Then uh, how political correctness has made Merry Christmas taboo. So David and Tana, is that Tanya? They are like new from the Black Star reports. If you read my my newsletter. It says submitted by new. That's the same new that stood up with me whenever we put the program together in front of the chat room back in 2000, and January 2012. And he sends me a, a the package that he sends me every, well, it's usually every Tuesday. He's already sent it to me for this week because when I'm done with this report, I have to finish the other newsletter and get that out if I'm a, ever, ever going to hope to have a Christmas tomorrow. Okay, so... Uh, David, and the, he's the reason that I created this program right here because I, I, I thought about doing it, but it's a lot of work. And so going and getting you guys this background information, that's what new does so that I can write my commentary. I can wake people up to the presentations, radio shows, blah, 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 blah. All right. So David and Tanya, I think it's Tanya. Then they are the, on the lookout looking for these different topics that are going to be placed in this in these different sections you can see i got things i have things to fix in this newsletter and i was mentioned that to tanya yesterday because i i did what i'm not supposed to do i'm not supposed to add content at the end when i'm just getting ready i'm not what i did this morning i'm not supposed to do because when you get one little thing off it jumbles up the text in the whole document that i've been working on all week so you get things like this that happen, mess things up. Then uh, EMP Commission warns, this is under signs of the time, warns the year-long blackout, massive toll, death toll. Frightening warning about approaching solar flare destruction revealed uh, within Revelation. That happens near the end of the age. I don't see that happen happening here. And with that, this is getting to be almost two hours long. Politics, Billy Graham's son, unfathomable. There's Pelosi. I wanted to stop it when she's doing that gavel and giving this little, uh, you guys better pay attention to what I'm saying over here because uh, this is big. Well, that's why you put the articles in your back pocket and you ran off. And uh, it, it's just so funny to me that the that the, 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 the House thinks they have, they're going to manipulate what happens in the Senate. But that's unconstitutional. She's trying to do what she's accusing Trump of Trump of doing. That's obstruction of Congress. She should give over those articles and let the senators go do their job. And you don't say, well, we can't appoint managers because we don't. Hey, guess what? The Senate's going to sit on their hands until you appoint your managers and walk them across to the Senate. That's the way it works. Once they get them, then they're going to debate. They're going to read them. They're going to look at them. And then they're going to have a debate, a debate about what they're going to do. And if they look at this and they're laughing and they're going, this is ridiculous, I have a motion to, to uh, dismiss. They get 51 votes. It's done. It could, it could be that quick to happen. Those on the left are saying, well, we need more witnesses. Well, that's because Schiff and Adler didn't do their job. They are the prosecutors over there. They're supposed to do all the interviews, do everything. And they say, well, let's do it like Clinton. Clinton had 11 indictments of law breaking of high crimes against them indictments all right and the end of that is a conviction they don't have one indictment they don't even have one against trump making that article of impeachment doesn't mean it's an indictment you can say you can put in there anything you want this is political that doesn't make it a breaking a law though just because congress breaks the laws doesn't mean that they get to decide that's the judge's job and it's the sole right of the U.S. Senate to judge the impeachments, not the House. So the, the idea that Pelosi didn't think this all the way through is astounding to me. Because she's been there 50 years. She never lost a vote. 
because she knows how to count votes. I mean, she, she's got to have a brain in her head. She doesn't look very smart right now at what she's doing. 31 of those, those uh, representatives in those districts, they're about to have a bunch of angry Trump people on, on their hands because Trump carried those. And Trump wasn't on the... He, he wasn't being elected in, two, in 2018. But Trump's on the ballot now. So people that didn't show up for the midterm, they're going to show up. And it's going to be a crucifixion. It's going to be crazy. Because uh, people in the middle are running to the right. They're running away from that radical left stuff that's happening over there. So anyway, um, appreciate you guys' support very, very much. I'd like to get more support. Hope that you... You see that uh, what's going on with the three witnesses, the two gospels, the two churches, four baptisms, the differences between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus, and how this helps us to establish a firm foundation of sound doctrine so that we can move forward together as a group, as a tutor group. And that's going to start on uh, January the 7th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. It's going to run 7 to 9. At least that's the plan. Sometimes these things run over. And as the group grows bigger, then we have people in Europe, we have people in Australia, we have people, this is what happened with me back in 2011, 2012. You got more people, people want to be administrators, and then you have people passing the baton. Some people are there eight hours, they're United States. Then they're eight hours from people that are in Europe, and then eight hours from people in Australia. And then it just goes around and around, so that the chat room stays up open 24-7. Whenever there's enough support for that, hopefully there is, before the uh, Black Star gets here. Get more information right here. Not here yet. Now, if you wanted to uh, subscribe, see how I'm logged in. If you want to come here and uh, and register, then you can be one of the few that go non-traditional theology and write on my post. If Wycliffe ever approves this guy here, if he ever approves, approves my post, which I think he will, because the uh, this guy. This guy looks like he's not going to take any nonsense. Now, if he's blinded just like Wycliffe, I may be... If he thinks this is all funny, well, that could be the reason. The reason that there's hardly any activity on this board could be because this guy is just like this guy. And they're running... Um, they're just berating people and, and, and pushing them around and changing, and changing things to get their outcome, their one gospel view out there. So uh, get more information right here at the website, right here in this, uh, there, these aren't just links to posts, these are links to videos that were made on these topics. And I think I've moved this many of them over, haven't had time yet. January's terrible for me. Not only is the dentist not done yet, I have this other medical issue that's going, and all the notifications for all subscribers have to be sent out as, fat, as rapidly as possible. January, going through each account, just figuring out who gets the 2020 Dropbox folder to access all the newsletters. So, it's, uh, it's a lot of the work that's on, on the back burner. I'm trying to get the rest of this moved over to this new YouTube channel. It's just going to be a time as, as time permits thing. I'm doing my best. Thanks again. Get more information here at the website. And I'll see you on the next uh, 005 report coming out next Tuesday. And, of course, you know, that's going to be the differences between God and my Father Art in heaven. So thanks again. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy holidays if you're not a Merry Christmas person. And I'll see you on the next um, update report.